Tunnels and subways. Two things that, in most post-apocalyptic settings, usually provide shelter for those running away from the destruction of nuclear fire. Today we shall see an example of this common trope, and also an exception, as while people survived here, twas not for long. Today we shall be dwelling in the Mass Pike Tunnel, which goes from the east, meets with the police rationing station, and then heads west. The story of the ration site is linked to the story of this tunnel, so today we shall gander at both. So straight away, spoke a skeleton, dead on a bench, with a can of food not far from them, suggesting that they were taking shelter here. Another corpse is also found a little further up, and they too have food. Two people eating canned goods in such close proximity and both dead is odd, so I think they both took shelter here, and most likely succumbed to the radiation, possibly after only a short while, or you know, someone killed them. Emerging into the tunnel proper, we come across mattresses and the remains of raider camp. Near these are shopping carts full of bones, hmm. And I'm sure this is also the raiders doing, unless some unhinged bastard did this while people were taking shelter here. Not much is left of the raider camp when we arrive, though that does not stop them shooting at us and setting up a turret. Also, another shopping cart full of bones, which I am sure there was a good reason for. Going into one of the side tunnels, we can find the remains of yet another body, which I suspect was probably in a similar condition to the two we found at the start, but got wrecked by somebody at some point. So of course there are ghouls, as this is a dark and spooky tunnel. In fact, they control most of the tunnel, and I expect the two raider groups at either ends were probably trying to eliminate them from the tunnel, as it would provide them with the means to traverse a large distance in relative safety. One of the ghouls is even dead in a wheelchair. I'm not sure if I did that or they were already like this. In which case, this may be the first case of a crippled feral ghoul we have seen. Behind him is some purr bastard that looks like they fell off a ladder and died, possibly as a result of the bombs, or just you know, bad luck. These ghouls may also be the remains of some of the people that took shelter here, though that doesn't explain where all the weird shit in here came from. Down this part of the tunnel, we come to a crash van. The driver seems to have crashed into the concrete barriers, being ejected through the windshield in the process. Perhaps they lost control due to the bombs. What's in the back, however, it, it raises questions. After quite a bit of pondering, and some LSD on my part, I have come up with two theories. They were either having a bath in the back seat of the car, or they were injured in such a way that they needed to be carried in something. Bath may have been the only option available. Of course, there is a chance that the vault -Tec calendar caused the crash. Remember, all vault related objects are a channel for their sorcerous shenanigans. A pileup of cars obstructs the way forward down this side of the tunnel, so one of the side ones must be taken. These lead to a spacious room where some of the generators for the tunnel are located, as well as the remains of the former survivors. One lies dead right beside the generators, possibly killed by some of the rubble that surrounds them. To the right of this is another corpse by a collapsed wall, inside of which a mini nuke can be fought, although I already took it. Inside the broken pipe just ahead is a raider who was either hiding from the ghouls or trying to get high, or both and either way they are unfortunately dead. In between this pipe and the next is... um... whatever the fuck this is. It looks like the corpse of a man with a tricycle and a ball and a teddy bear. Now given that he seems to have hidden himself away with these objects, I think they belong to someone he loved. A child, most likely. If he is indeed one of the people that sought shelter here, they may have assumed that their loved one was dead. Then they hid themselves away with the only possession they had of them. The other option is the burr represents the child's corpse, as many of you have pointed out for certain burrs in the series. This means they both died here, and the toys belong to the child. After that side area, we come back out into the tunnel, on the other side of the blockage. This area has a lot more cars in it than before, probably because this was as far as they got on either side before the blast hit, possibly disabling the cars. It's also a lot more flooded here, as this in fact was the lowest part of the tunnel. Now I ordinarily, back down the tunnel a bit, there would be a mound with two mannequins and a skeleton in the middle, playing chess, which when seen through all the smog down here was really creepy, and sort of scared the fuck out of me. Ada, however, ploughed right through it and ruined it. 
so to whatever deranged sod made this. I apologize for my robot companions, well, rudeness. Going into the side area to the left here, we find the remains of yet more survivors. One woman is lying on a bench, and then there's this chap off to the left. They are found with their head in a trash can. I assume they are not hiding, so they were either eating food out of it, or looking for food. Sad either way. Further in, and to the left, we shall be starting our journey towards the rationing site. Through a locked door, we come to the remains of this fine fellow, propped up against a knocked over table we can assume they fell backwards into when they died. A puddle of blood is usually located beside them, but it chooses when it wants to appear. The whole tape of Detective Purry can be found next to the body. Jack, this is Perry. What's taking you so long, cuz? You should have moved more than half this stuff by now. I've got that sanctimonious prick McDonald breathing down my neck. Partner my ass. We gotta get this stuff out of here and skip town before Reese catches on. We'll let his dumbass take the fall for this and come back in a week or so and, and, and say our grandma was having, was having health problems down in New York. Just make sure you're ready tonight and... Who's there? You better show yourself, asshole. So this Detective Purry was working with his cousin and it seems to have involved all the supplies here, which are likely from the ration site. It seems they were selling it, or trying to, but someone called McDonald was onto them. He wanted to get it all sold and then leave before someone called Reyes found out, who we will see more of later. Well, it seems someone did find out as he was recording the tape. Based on where we find him, he was shot and killed just before he finished recording it. Well, next we are heading through the hole in the wall at the back of the room where we find the remains of a soldier, who is in fact Reyes, as their holotake can be found beside their body. We need to talk, Perry. Your partner keeps sticking his nose where it shouldn't be. I don't care if he's a cop. If you keep sniffing around the tracks, he's liable to get hit by the train. Are we clear? Anyway, I've got the stuff moved down into the utility tunnels, but it's burning a hole in my pocket. I don't want to hear any more excuses about it being hard to fence. People would pay top dollar for this stuff. So Reyes was working with Purry, or at least he thought he was, and moved the rations down here. Purry's partner is probably the McDonald that Purry mentioned in his tips, and Reyes seems to be of the opinion that he needs to be removed. Now Reyes is also dead, possibly shot like Purry was, though we don't know who did it. Next we will be going all the way to the back of this tunnel which will lead us to a door and take us to the ration site. So this brings us out into a warehouse that, when we arrive, will be stuffed full of more rat brood mothers, which are quite annoying. This seems to be where all the supplies were being stored, and it doesn't look like anyone got to them either. Some supplies can be found upstairs, but it's the terminal that interests us. So this was Reyes's terminal, and the first entry is on police snooping. Reyes says the police are not allowed in, which is odd as this was their site. It seems the supplies were going missing, and he uses this as an excuse to refuse the entry, though we know he was the cause of the supplies missing. He finishes by saying he wants McDonald, the one snooping around, arrested if he comes near the site again. The next entry is just a manifest, and it outlines what could be found in the site. So Reyes was taking control, like a boss, probably to prevent McDonald from getting too close to the truth. The outside of the site paints a grim picture. Parts of the fence have been destroyed by people driving through it, probably desperate to get the supplies they needed, or felt they needed, though I couldn't find their corpse. Down in the street, a group are fighting over money in a safe, possibly bound for this site. I am not sure if they died from the truck crashing into them or not. The next terminal of interest is found inside this trailer, and the fence surrounding the trailer is destroyed by a digger, or whatever you would call this possibly commandeered by somebody else to try to take down the fence. So this seems to be Perry's terminal, and the first entry is in the shortages. Apparently several items are missing from the supplies. The sender of the message, Sergeant Randall, seems to think it's some people trying to get a little extra. However, he wants the officers to be a bit more vigilant, as apparently some people have been robbed in the lines. Grannies, no less. Shameful work, that. The next entry is about schedules. Reyes and Perry were in charge of it for the police and army, and between the work done by the army and police, the two of them probably used this to their advantage to get the supplies, making sure they were not caught. Lastly is a whole tip from McDonald. 
That son of a bitch Sergeant Riser caught me trying to have a look in the warehouse. And that asshole actually drew his weapon on me. Look, Perry, I know you two came up together and all, but I'm telling you that guy is dirty and I need you to have my back on this. Those ration crates didn't just go missing on their own. And it's our job to make sure they're getting to the people who need them. Just lean on him a bit, okay? See if he'll let you in the warehouse to have a look around. McDonald out. So McDonald suspected Reyes was responsible for the supplies going missing, and wanted Perry to confront him. Apparently Reyes and Perry grew up together, which is probably why they set this up in the first place. It's a possibility that Perry didn't know about it until he went to confront Reyes, and then he got involved. The two tapes we found on there most likely occurred after, which means McDonald may have been the one to kill them. Back inside the tunnel, we turn left once we leave the area with Perry and Reyes in it. This brings us to another side tunnel, and this really unnerving skull. I mean look how wide his mouth is open. It's just plain creepy. Hope no one used that skull for anything weird. Back around to the right, we find another crashed car with corpses in it. It seems something caused him to crash, and at least one of them was ejected out the front of it, with the other most likely dying in their seat, or what was left of it anyway. Back at the end of the tunnel, we come to this train car, which has some of the weirdest shit down here in it. So yup, teddy bear arrangements. All are welcome. So they come in three sizes, and it may be that they're meant to represent a family. The one on the far left, the mother, the next along the child with the bottle, the largest, the father, and last being the elder child. I only say this as I find it odd they were arranged so specifically, and in different sizes, which is why I think it's deliberate. However, it's, uh, it's not the weirdest thing. Further in, privacy is written on the wall in chalk, and some medical supplies can be found here as well. Alright, nothing too far out of the ordinary so far, a teddy bear also seems to be driving the crash train. Well, that too is okay. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> hmm, hmm, okay, alright, that's not. Unless my eyes deceive me, that is a teddy bear surgery. One seems to be in the process of cutting open another with the medical supplies probably meant for them. Not sure what the typewriter is for. Some weird shit probably. Either way, this is all very twisted, and reminds me of the serial killer in the feds, the feds phantom. Even though we know it can't be him. It... right? So now I want to talk about the thing that everybody always tells me about these places. The giant heads on either side of these tunnels. This one in particular looks like someone severed it and it's bleeding, which is fucking creepy. I am aware they are more or less identical to the head we find in Dunwich Borers, but I don't think one is a reference to the other. More likely than not, they simply didn't want to make another giant head asset and just reuse the one they had on hand. I will say, however, that most companions do in fact comment that there is something not quite right about this place. That, the weird arrangements, number of people that died in here, and the large ghoul presence? Well, maybe there is more to this place than we can see. So that is the Mass Pike Tunnel, a tunnel that runs a good length of Boston and meets up in the middle with the ration site. Today, raiders fight over it with ghouls to provide themselves with an area of strategic advantage. Inside are the remains of many people who, most likely, survived the initial blast wave, but not the mayhem that occurred after. Each has a story to tell, the most interesting of which was of Perry and Reyes, a police officer and soldier that knew each other from birth. They conspired to steal some of the supplies and sell them on. However, Perry's partner McDonald caught on to this, and I think he confronted them both and killed them. The tunnel has many strange things in it, from mannequins to odd arrangements of teddy bears, some of the oddest we have seen in fact. With the statue heads outside and everything inside, there may be a darker truth behind this place. But for now, the thing that spooks us the most are those creepy teddy bear sculptures. An old tunnel which has seen the deaths of those from before and after the war. I hoped you liked this look at it. If you did like it, give the video a like. And if you want regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions for lore or future videos should be left in the comments below. Better yet, go on to my subreddit so we can discuss them in more detail. It's linked in the description. If you wish to, you can support me on Patreon. 
a pound or dollar, I ask for no more. If there are some rewards you would like to see there, please message me and I shall consider them. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular updates or have a wee chat. Any business you wish to discuss, email me at nthapple.business at gmail.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, goodbye.